the people who are actually using it and getting kills with it. That's so unfortunate for the two of you. It has worse spread and it actually does eight less damage a pellet in close range, which is really not good. What? How did you get over there? First off, how did that even happen? So hello gamers and welcome back to another video. So recently I made a video about the most toxic guns in Phantom Forces and I talked about the most toxic one in every single category, but I also wanted to make a video about the most sweaty guns in every category. A lot of people wanted me to make that video, so here it is. Sweaty guns and toxic guns will be very different, but this one will probably be a lot more useful for most people simply because it will have very, very easy guns to get high kill games with. These will be simple to sweat with guns that people will get a lot of kills with and that's why sweats will use them. First off, we have assault rifle and yeah, it's the m 16 a this really goes without saying, the M16A3 is probably the most popular gun in the entire game for high kills because most people in this game have their most kills on the M16A3 and it's pretty simple why. There's really no disadvantage to using this gun. It doesn't do anything particularly well, but it doesn't really do anything bad either. Like, it just does everything pretty well. 800 RPM, 405 shot, 2 second reload, it can go down to like 1.7 with the 25-45 conversion. It's sweaty, it's low recoil, it's everything you could really ask for in a sweat gun. If you ask like anybody who rank 100 or above, they're gonna tell you that this is probably one of their most high kill guns, if not their highest kill gun, because yeah, it really goes without saying, this gun is really good, because it just does everything pretty well. Next up, we have the battle rifle category, and this is going to go to a very similar gun, so I'm not really going to talk about this one too much. I talked about it in my most toxic guns as well. This is basically take a battle rifle and make it an assault rifle. That's the Beowulf ECR 5.6. It is definitely one of the conversions ever added to the game. Is it interesting? Is it unique? No. Nope. Next up, we have PDWs, and as I talked about in my previous video, PDWs are actually pretty sweaty. A lot of sweaty players will run them, but if there's one gun that you can guarantee will always be used by a sweaty player, that's probably going to have to go to the MP510. The MP510 is basically take the mp5 give it more recoil less velocity and a ton more damage this is one of my favorite guns in the game especially one of my favorite pdw's maybe top three favorite pdw's i think chris vector the rama and this are probably my three favorites i really really like this gun it's great is it sweaty though yeah oh yeah it basically takes assault rifle or even like battle rifle type damage, gives it 30 rounds and really good handling. The recoil is not bad either. And if you want a PDW that is basically an absolute powerhouse regardless of range, yeah, this is for you. This has more min damage than like most of the assault rifles. I'm talking more than the HK416, M16A3. It has one less min damage than the Scar L, which is like, you know, one of the best min damage guns in the game. And the fact that this has only one less damage than that is amazing. You know, this is going to be a five hit kill to the body all ranges and with one headshot, it's going to be a four hit kill all ranges and you got to keep in mind most pdws in this game are going to be a six hit kill so the fact that this can kill in five and probably four hits is just ridiculous there's really no disadvantage to this gun yeah it's got recoil and the velocity isn't as good as it could be it's actually better velocity than most pdws overall the fire rate is great 800 you know that's on the higher end for pdws and just guns in general and yeah the recoil it's there, but it's not like bad. It can kind of fall off over like medium ranges, I guess. Like you're not gonna hit every single shot over range, but it's gonna be about as accurate as most PWs, you know, most fast firing PWs. But it does more damage, so it's actually going to be more effective over range. 1347 on this one, another really high kill gun for me. PCR got 1500, but like only 200 on 556, 40 on 410, and that's literally it. Like I only use the default ammo on this gun. Next up, we have shotguns, and you probably expected this one. Yeah, it's the Saiga 12. Do I really have to talk about how broken this gun is? Probably not. If you you've ever fought against people using this gun, you know that anybody good with it, and they usually are trying to sweat, they're going to be doing really well. If you see a shotgun user who's actually sweating and is a high rank, chances are, if they have a lot of kills, it's the Saiga 12. The reason for that is basically, this is the fastest firing, like, actually high damage gun for the shotgun category. The use S12 just does not compare in terms of damage. It has worse spread, and it actually does eight less damage a pellet in close range, which is really not good. What? How did you get over there? First off, how did that even happen? With Birdshot, it still does 20 damage, which is the same as the use as has double the pellets with birdshot so basically it can do double the damage of the usas 12 which makes this thing an absolute menace when it comes to very close ranges as well as like you know close medium range like it can hit and kill with birdshot to like 40 studs birdshot is way too good on this gun they nerfed birdshot but like it's still just so broken like as you can see there that was 47.5 studs you should not be one shotting with a shotgun that fires this quickly from that far away because you know um you're gonna go around and kill the entire lobby with this and that's why sweat players actually run this thing super often like as you can see i have not missed a single one shot so far and i'm killing people from like 40 studs away you should not be able to do that with a semi-automatic shotgun it's really weird because during the shot okay there we go probably still hit him for like 50 from that far which is stupid you know this actually got a nerf with the other shotguns but unlike the other shotguns it actually got kind of a buff too because it used to have a terrible reload speed that made the dbv 12 a more usable gun if 
if you were sweaty because like a reload time for your gun if you're going for high kills is really important because that way you can continue a multi-kill and not get caught reloading. So switching to your secondary, you know, it's faster than reloading, but you want to actually reload your gun because secondary weapons are just not as effective. If you've ever watched people get a high kill game on a lot of those high kill games, not a single kill is with their secondary or their melee. Maybe like a few, maybe like five. When I got my 135 kill game with the Scar L, I don't think I got a single kill with anything that wasn't the gun itself. I didn't get a single nade kill. I didn't get, wow, dude, single secondary kill, melee kill, nothing. And the reason for that is because I can reload, you know, I can just reload before uh, ending the multi-kill. So that buff was definitely not needed. This is one of the few shotguns, if not the only shotgun in the game that I still do 100% recommend, the birdshot ammo time. Birdshot is really weird because like, it's not as good as it used to be for sure. It has terrible drop, but for some reason, the Psyga 12 has a 130 stud min range. So that's why it doesn't really matter is because the damage drop is not even that bad. So that's why it doesn't really matter is because the damage drop is not bad. You know, 40 studs to 130, there are assault rifles with like that kind of range or worse. It's kind of weird. Of course, assault rifles, you know, do more damage than six over range, but like you get what I mean. They drop about the same speed, which is really weird for a shotgun. Take for example, the KSG-12, which is a pump action shotgun. It has 50 to 90. So this one having 45 to 130 makes absolutely no sense. Next up, we have the LMG class. And I feel like people have kind of fallen off of the LMGs a little bit, but I still do think the Colt LMG is definitely up there. They nerfed 223 on it, but like it's still accurate. You know, like 223 used to be a lot better because this gun used to have a torso multi, but as you can see, when they buffed all the suppressors. People realized that ARS suppressor or T-brake makes this gun ridiculously accurate because old muzzle brake wasn't that great on it and old compensator had like a little bit too much vertical kick. But ARS suppressor, if you guys didn't know, basically removes a little bit of overall recoil, 10%. You know, that's enough to really make a difference in making this gun just feel overall more accurate, which is why the ARS suppressor is so popular in this game. I use it on plenty of guns. Other suppressors sound better in my opinion. The default suppressor does not reduce your range. ARS suppressor does reduce your min damage range, so you could just use T-brake, but like really like the mixture of having a suppressor so a quieter gun as well as less recoil like that's such a good feature i think era suppressor is pretty balanced but like the colt lmg itself maybe not they did remove the torso multi but yeah if you've ever seen a low rank ultra sweat chances are they're probably going to be using this. Definitely a sweaty gun, but I really like it. It's a good gun. I have nearly a thousand kills on it. It's kind of sad because like I have a ton of kills on every gun so far, but that's because they're sweaty and you get a lot of kills with them, you know? And speaking of that, yeah, I have 1200 kills on the SVDS. And this is one of the few guns that, yeah, it's pretty sweaty, but I also like really like the gun. I don't use it as much as I used to. They nerfed and then unnerfed the iron sights. I really haven't gotten back into the gun since then. It's unfortunate because yeah, it's my highest kill. Well, maybe second or third highest kill. Maybe second highest kill sniper rifle. My first highest kill is of course the intervention. I used to love that gun. It's fine now, but like it used to be way more broken. The nice thing about the SVDS is it really hasn't been nerfed or buffed in a very long time, except for the iron sight change. But that was just a weird misstep where essentially they made all the sniper rifle iron sights not zoom in anymore, which was kind of just ridiculous considering like they're sniper rifles, you know, like it doesn't make any sense realistically that your iron sights would make you zoom in more, but it was a feature people liked it because you can use iron sights on snipers and still like, you know, aim down sights. But basically they made them only have a two times zoom instead of a four times. And let me tell you, it looked extremely bad. It looks super bad. In fact, I think you can still use that. If you take off the site on the Mosin, I think it works. So here's it now. And that was it before. That's what they wanted to change it to. You know, this very good to this. Like, how are you supposed to use that on a sniper rifle? I guess I just got a headshot there. And I do like how it's optional now. Cause like, yeah, you definitely don't want to use this. How are you supposed to snipe with this? The most sweaty DMR is of course going to be the VSS 762. As I said it in my previous most toxic gun in every category video, go watch that video. If you have not, it explains everything about this gun. For pistols, we have a gun that you probably weren't expecting. It's not the XIX. It's actually the Auto Mag 3. Now I'm not a huge fan of this gun, to be honest. I got the hype around it when it was new. And let me tell you, like people who use this still, yeah, they are the most sweaty of the most sweaty. Basically modern GSP user, because yeah, you have to hit the head with this gun. Oh my gosh, I'm going on. But when you do, it's basically like a Beowulf TCR, but in your pocket. It is extremely good. In fact, it's probably better than the TCR after the TCR nerf, which is, you know, unfortunate because I love the TCR and they nerfed it. Dude, I'm so good with this gun now. But yeah, if you're sweaty, oh my gosh, I do not miss a headshot. I even got one on that guy, but it didn't kill him. Like it can fire decent speed, but it has a ton of recoil and cannot one-shot body, which is definitely good, but it can one-shot headshot way farther than like most guns in this game. So basically, if you want an XIX and a GSP put together, that's what this is. It relies on headshot, but if you do get the headshots, yeah, it's broken. And if you've ever seen somebody actually using this gun before, you know they will headshot you because yeah, that's what they have to do. So people who are actually using it and getting kills with it, that's 
so unfortunate for the two of you. And the game ended. That was cool. If you're sweaty, you're not going to be a massive machine pistol user, but there is one sweat gun that I definitely agree with. I think it's a great gun, but yeah, it's definitely going to be the pocket secondary spray down range gun of the sweats, and that is the MP1911. This gun it has a lot of firing. It's basically like the Tech 9 for people with a refined taste in good guns, you know, because unlike the Tech 9, it's good. Listen, the Tech 9 used to be really broken. I have over a thousand kills on it, but yeah, they ruined it. I mean, it's not even like a competition. I mean, basically every other machine pistol in the game and the Tech 9, it's just a bad gun now. Just unfortunate because like I liked the Tech 9 before. It might have been too broken before. Yeah, it was. Keep in mind, the Tech 9 used to do 28 to 20. It used to be a 4 to a 5 shot. Now it's going to be a 5, basically a 6 shot, down to like a 7 shot. It's ridiculous. It takes way too many shots to kill. They nerfed the damage way too hard. They nerfed it to 24, and people are like, that's kind of crazy. Then people stopped using it, and then they nerfed the damage again, all the way down to 21, which is crazy. It's gotten 7 less damage and like 6 less damage over range. The fact that it could 5 hit kill ranges was kind of ridiculous, but listen, that's not even what we're talking about right now. We're talking about the mp1911 this gun has 1300 rpm it's a four to six shot which is pretty good and most importantly unlike the tech 9 it's got great recoil so better hits to kill better damage of course and it's got better recoil and also you know it's just accurate it's good you know the ttk might not be quite as good but like it has 1300 rpm do you think the ttk is going to be good yeah, it's good. Revolver Executioner, because it one-shots Torso, Sweats like to use it, I'm gonna jump off. And then last up, we have the Obrez. Now, the Obrez is basically the Steyr Scout, but for people who don't like taking up their primary weapon slot. It has 90 RPM, way more than the default Mosin, but bad velocity, and it does not really do much body damage. It can be a three-hit kill to the body if you don't hit your heads, but it's a one-shot headshot, so it's more like a scout, you know? Because the Mosin, you don't really have to hit heads every time, because it's gonna be a two-hit kill all ranges anyway, which is pretty Average for sniper rifle, you know? Even the Hecate is going to be a two hit kill limb over range, you know? And that's got 28 RPM. So the Mosin having 70 RPM and requiring two hits over range if you're not hitting the head is really not even that bad, you know? Just hit him a second time. But yeah, overall, really fun gun. Definitely recommended. What are you doing? Yeah, if you guys did enjoy it, let's go for 1,000 likes and I'll make a ranking every barrel, We're ranking the best barrels in Phantom Forces video. Oh my gosh, what a shot. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Have a nice day.